About 50 kilometers south of Hagada is the industrial town of Safaga. On a long strip of beach lined with hotel resorts, the tourist area is well away from the busy port. It's a relatively quiet place with a sprinkling of shops and restaurants, but there's a decent variety of things to do. Safaga is one of the best places on the Red Sea for diving, with various wrecks and coral reefs out at sea, and there's also excellent snorkeling on the nearby Tabia Island. This is also the closest place on the Red Sea to Luxor, so if you feel like a bit of culture, it's very convenient for a day trip to the Valley of the Kings and the Temple at Karnak. While there's little nightlife to speak of, an enjoyable contrast to the hotel bars is the quad bike trip out into the mountains, where you can watch the sun go down over a cup of tea and a shisha with a local Bedouin family. There's a number of kite centres along the bay, but each one has different riding conditions. The wind is very smooth everywhere, but it has a tendency to drop off mid-afternoon, especially in the cooler months. At the Meneville Hotel, CNS, or Club Natalie Seymour, has unsuitable conditions right in front of the centre, so they take their guests upwind to Crazy Bay for the whole day. Pupils and riders all catch the same boat, which takes some time to get to the spot, but it's well worth the effort of getting up early every day. Une journée classique de cours à Safaga, c'est rendez-vous à 8h15 au club. On embarque sur le bateau, on a à peu près une demi-heure, trois quarts d'heure de bateau jusqu'au spot. Euh, arrivé au spot, on propose trois heures de cours le matin, un petit repas sur le bateau, entre amis, c'est assez sympa. Et si le vent est OK, on propose une heure, une heure de cours l'après-midi ou retour en downwind pour les, pour les autonomes. Allez, on y va L'école existe depuis 5 ans, on est une école labellisée ICAO, on travaille donc sous les standards ICAO, 4 élèves par moniteur maximum. Le vent au cours de la journée, il est plutôt fort le matin, après il va tourner légèrement de côté pour avoir une meilleure régularité. Et vers 2-3 heures, dans une journée générale, il commence un peu à baisser. Le spot est un wide bay avec un cross offshore wind, un small sandy shallow area, et then deep water. La grosse qualité du spot, c'est plat. Donc c'est un spot qui est vraiment freestyle, freeride, vitesse aussi. Euh, il, y a quel, il y a quelques coraux, mais assez, assez visibles. Donc euh, c'est pas trop un problème. If the wind holds up, independent riders will be glad they got up early, as they can ride the entire 7 kilometers back downwind to the center alongside the returning boat. The boat can also make a detour to Tabia Island, where everyone can jump off and go snorkeling on its wonderful long reef. The CNS Club is also building a villa to the south of Safaga, with a beautiful kiting spot straight in front. With only 12 rooms, it promises to be an intimate and relaxed place to spend your holiday. Là, c'est un petit peu différent du spot qu'on a qu'on a qu'on a dans le nord. C'est on a pied assez longtemps. Il y a des changements de couleurs qui sont assez assez extraordinaires et beaucoup moins de coraux qu'on peut voir et un grand espace toujours avec un vent qui est qui est onshore qui permet d'avoir là une sécurité euh, assurée vraiment, vraiment totale.
Further north, the Skyriders Club sits on the beach of the Hotel Shams, with convenient bungalows right by the sea. It's the largest windsurf centre in the Club Mistral chain, but they're now developing the kite surfing as well and are building a large new centre. The Club Mistral Skyrider Safaka Spot is uh, a nice area with a beginner uh, laguna. We have uh, 300 meters uh, in the length and 150 meters in the wide. Uh, a laguna where it's shallow water and it's uh, mainly between uh, knee and uh, hip deep. So uh, the wind is goes offshore in the morning and it's changing during the day to side shore. Luckily we can do all of our lessons in the lagoon. We have um, standing water, um, which makes it very safe. We don't have to do any flying on the beach. Um, and we do everything from the first handling of the kite up to water start and beyond everything in the water. We've got a, a nice area at the top of the beach where we have space. Um, landing is also possible for people that can come back to the same spot, it's easy. Um, but if people drift down, it's also possible further down the beach. But then you have to be a bit careful because there's going to be some sun umbrellas quite close to the water. So you have to be careful when bringing the kite down. The spot is relatively small. And although there are separate areas, you do need to watch out for the swimmers and windsurfers if you drift downwind. Upwind and out at sea, however, there's plenty of space, a nice steady blow, and the chop is perfect to use as a ramp when jumping. What I recommend to come to Safago because we have fantastic wind statistics. Um, pretty much the whole year we've got wind. Even on days when there's really not much wind, um, the thermal kicks in maybe about 11 o'clock and if you're lucky you get a couple of hours on the water. Um, the best time of year to come for kite surfers? Well, um, a bit of a secret tip is September actually. Um, it's sort of between the holidays. Um, well, the whole of autumn is good, but the, the middle of September, the last three years I've been here, we've had great winds and it's not been too crowded. So yeah, that's a good tip. Skyriders has the advantage in Safago of having affordable accommodation right by the spot. There's also a smarter hotel opening up right behind the new kite centre. This is a great place to come with a family, as the hotels offer lots of activities for young people. Further north again in the bay, at the Intercontinental Hotel, is the Surf Motion Centre. It's a cool place to hang out, with a beach bar right in front of the spot and music playing that can often be heard on the water. They have a large beach and six square kilometres in which to ride. The sandy lagoon covers around two square kilometres of this and then the water sinks to three or four metres deep further out. In the summer, you may have to ride on the deep water at low tide as the lagoon can be too shallow to navigate. In the winter, however, the lagoon is perfect with around a metre and a half of water all day. Surf motion is an easy place to learn with its flat water and lots of room to stand. We have five kite, and kite surf instructors here. So this means one instructor is just teaching two people, two students. It means we have exclusive teaching lessons. Actually we're teaching flat water in the lagoon where the water is about one meter deep and this means it's great for learning kite surfing. For one teaching center we have a really big wide beach. This means we have a lot of space for buggy kiting which is very nice, which is very cool and you have just the perfect conditions to learn kite surfing here. With this amazing lagoon, nice water, it's warm, sunny every day, so it makes it all a bit more easier. At the top of the bay is the private luxury resort Summer Bay. It's full of five-star hotels, which justly pride themselves on their excellent food and accommodation. You can circulate between the hotels to take advantage of the activities on offer. There's just the one kite centre for everyone, 
and a shuttle bus service runs between the hotels to take the guests down to the Kite House, which is a short drive away. Set on a wide bay with clean offshore wind and very flat water, the wind is often stronger than in Hagada, sometimes reaching seven Beaufort, hence the club name. Suma Bay is a huge spot and it's a big bay, enough for a lot of kiters, and it's like three kilometers and five kilometers wide. And here we have not so much shallow water, so after a couple of meters you will go to a deep water, it's like a drop-off. And the bay here is enough for a lot of activities and kiters and windsurfers and the sailors as well. Summer Bay you can have a lot of activity. It's a great place for diving, for snorkeling, especially in the Sheraton. It's uh, a bridge into the water to a big reef. It's one kilometer around the Summer Bay. It's the same like diving, but you can only make it by snorkeling. We have one of the best golf courses in the world. It's not easy, but it's perfect and spectacular. Summer Bay it's not only a special place here by the bay, it's also a special place by the hotels. Um, it's a more expensive um, address from Egypt, I know this, uh, but uh, the luxury it's really higher. We have uh, really really nice hotels here. The resort also has the largest spa and thalasso center in Egypt. With various different pools filled with mineral rich waters, and a long list of massages and treatments. One could while away many hours being pampered in this elegant setting. Summer Bay is an exclusive place, catering to those who want the best and are willing to pay for it. There are no options for people on a tight budget, but it will prove worth every penny if you decide to splash out. Yeah!